It's a game that's attracted tons of controversy, from mainstream reviewers to even popular YouTube critics. In a market where AAA developers have lied their butts off to the public, it's rare to see an indie game get this level of hate. So what exactly caused all of this and why has a simple walking simulator inspired so much hatred from gamers who are generally open-minded? The answer is a lot more complicated than you would like to think. It's a culmination of numerous problems with the gaming industry, something that ties together critics, audiences, and developers. As you tried to solve the mystery of what happened to your sister in the game, let us try and solve the riddle of what happened with the Gone Home situation. If you were to ask me what the most exploitable video game genre is, I would probably have to say the horror one. As a certain recent game has proven, it's a niche that any indie developer can try their unpolished hand at. After all, creating a tense atmosphere does not require a big budget. We have seen numerous so-called walking simulators adapt to the horror genre. The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, Slender, The Eight Pages, Soma, and Through the Woods, which I actually did a review on last October. Gone Home didn't exactly try to be one of those games, per se, but unfortunately when it came to marketing the game, developer Fulbright couldn't quite avoid falling into the same trap. And we can see this from the launch trailer. In its one and a half minute runtime, it ticks the boxes of an indie horror game, doesn't it? A sketchy letter hinting that something horribly went wrong, like an Amnesia The Dark Descent. A creepy house to explore by yourself, like Himuro Mansion in Fatal Frame. And of course, the chilling, flickering lights as seen in fear. On top of all of this, nobody from Fulbright actively fought against these wrongful assumptions, leading to its popularization. Thus, when gamers played the game, they were no doubt disappointed by the lack of thrills mirrored in those expectations for Gone Home. And the rest is history. But there's a barrier between players and games that should theoretically prevent this from happening. I'm talking of course about critics. Reviewers should inform consumers about everything, and yet it didn't happen. Not only did it not happen, but the opposite happened as well. Players were misinformed. How do you like your first show? I was so happy. I felt tears starting in my eyes. And then she up and hugged me. I think she could tell. In one of my vlogs, you may remember that I talked about implementing a new review system, that I would score a game by offering what I thought the game was worth in actual dollars. This is because the arbitrary numerical scores given out by most critics do not make sense. What is the fiscal difference between an 8.5 and an 8.7? Am I saving dollars or pennies? Gone Home had two main problems with it. The first being that it was not worth the $20 asking price from Fulbright. I'm sorry, but even if you explore every nook and cranny, at best you're getting four hours of gameplay. And yet, not a single reviewer talked about this. Both corporate and indie. Nothing. Imagine if every single one of those people had made it clear that Gone Home was maybe overpriced. We could have seen a price drop from that pressure. But instead, what we got was universal praise and review score numbers. And when a potential buyer sees those positive reviews on those big glowing numbers, it leads to the belief that a game is worth the full price, no matter the cost. And keep in mind that Gone Home came out before Steam refunds, meaning that anyone who felt like their money was wasted couldn't get it back anyway. But Gone Home had a second, arguably worse problem, its small target audience. Gone Home was meant to appeal specifically to people who grew up during the 90s. It was here that you had the game's plethora of cultural references, from Riot Girl and X-Files to political topics like conversion therapy and Don't Ask, Don't Tell. These were things that you would be familiar with if you were a 90s kid and subsequently not get if you did not live through it. Yet, once again, reviewers failed to mention that. According to them, a game where you explore 90s culture 90% of the time will apparently appeal to everyone. Quite the oversight from a group of professionals. They failed to do their job and as a result, a good game got an unfair reputation. Three years since it hit PC gamers, Gone Home's reputation remains mixed. While many acknowledge the hate for it was uncalled for, its release on consoles last year only inspired a low Metacritic score. But for me personally, Gone Home worked. 
It had a terrific voice acting component, an interesting story, and a world packed with detail. But I also fully acknowledge I was in its target range. Contrary to what some defenders may say, Gone Home wasn't hated because it was a walking sim. Subsequent entries in the genre like Firewatch and even Fulbright's next game Tacoma have received good reviews. Gone Home got scorned because it happened to encompass every single thing wrong with this industry. Misleading marketing from developers and publishers, reviews from critics that don't actually tell you anything important, and quick judgments from emotional gamers. If anything, Gone Home should be taken as a precautionary tale for future game releases, both AAA and indie.